Okay. Well, tonight I will be sharing my photographs from the El Tigre Agricultural Cooperative Nutrition Education Project in El Salvador from 1976 to 77, where I was a Peace Corps volunteer and a project team member. These photos document the cooperative community life that, is, that was first shown, these pictures were actually shown back 35 years ago. This is the first time. My Peace Corps service started in Guatemala, that's me, by the way, in 1973. <clears throat> the, guy with a, the guy with a beard and a hat, <clears throat> working with an ag co-op. I had a degree in art in Humboldt State, but wanted experience learning firsthand about other cultures. I was looking forward to meeting new friends and improving my Spanish. I also wanted to see if I could make a difference in Central America. In 1976, I was reassigned to a nutrition education research project located in El Salvador. The purpose was to assess the rural community's protein and calorie malnutrition status and determine if local food sources could be developed to address malnutrition. Three out of four children were considered malnourished because they were not receiving enough protein and calories. International food aid was not solving the problem. Could a model program be developed that would improve nutrition status using local, fo local food sources? After meeting with the local, co uh, local community leaders, the El Tigre Community uh, Cooperative in El Salvador was identified as an ideal site for the project. This is a photo, well that was a photo, the co-op headquarters. The cooperative was made up of approximately 30 families with a total population of 150 people. Everybody lived near the cooperative. The co-op managed about 800 hectares of land on 1900 and, or the 1977 acres of arable land. Corn and beans served as a basic food crop and surplus was sent to market. Uh, basically the project was, their, their farming was done with animal traction. Transport to and from the cooperative was on foot back by horseback or chicken bus, that's what that is. It carried not only people but also small livestock, sometimes even pigs. Roads in the area were not paved and they were often flooded. This gentleman, as a member of the co-op, is sitting with his grandsons on the porch of the co-op offices. He would tell me stories often of his childhood. In particular, I remember him telling me of the 1932 Pipil Indian Revolt that resulted in the massacre of 10,000 Pipilis by General Martinez, the El Salvador head of state. The abuelito told me that with a hint of irony that Martinez's explanation for the lives of the Pipilis were so miserable that he was doing them a favor by sending them quickly to heaven. This is a typical house for a cooperative member's family. Uh, they were actually built as temporary housing until they could get uh, cinder block houses or adobe houses built. This is our project team with some of the members of the, of the uh, cooperative. It's a multinational group from folks from Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Guatemala, and El Salvador. We really developed quickly a sense of mutual trust that was crucial for the project's success. And the most popular activity with the group was, <laughs> was uh, outdoor movies. The project began with a health assessment, that's what's going on here with the community members, it included biometrics, that's weight, height, body mass index, and blood values. And it helped us establish the overall health baseline. This is our, that was our team member, Ruben Dario, doing a BMI on a pregnant woman. This is the cooperative manager. He's uh, visiting one of the prized oxen. The cooperative was started with only animal traction and hand labor, and it helped them prepare the ground for planting as well as hauling heavy loads. They used ox carts that looked like something you'd see from ancient Rome. This is the plow that they often used. Uh, they used it for preparing the land. It was hauled by a team of oxen. There was labor and time available only to prepare a portion of the 800 hectares of land, uh, that, and much of the land would lay, lay fallow and unplanted. The cooperative members had a, had a set of hand tools as well, as you'll see in this picture. An azadone, that's a large hoe that the gentleman's holding, a pick, machetes, and homemade cane knives. The large vessels in the foreground were for hauling water. One is metal and the other clay. Nowadays, they're going to be using plastic uh, vessels, uh, cheap ones from China. Eventually, the cooperative was able to secure a loan to mechanize their production. They were able to purchase two tractors. Uh, discs, uh, and a large truck for hauling seed fertilizer and product. This investment increased their productivity and they able to expand their production uh, capacity and leap, and leap from really the 17th to the 20th century in terms of technology. These gentlemen are the proud owners of a newly acquired disc. This tool gave them the capacity to expand cultivation of crops to a wider variety of fruits and vegetables. This increased their income so they could purchase livestock 
thus giving the families more access to protein. Okay, okay here's the, the next picture. is a slide of uh, the male members gathered for a group portrait together as a cooperative. They were able to expand their potential and the possibility of creating a better life for themselves and their families. It was a successful grassroots effort started by the community, community members themselves. Okay. Doña Maria, this is the next picture, shows off her home-built kitchen. Most of the women members not only worked the land, they also had an endless task of preparing meals for their families. There was no running water, electricity, or refrigeration, and firewood was the pr principal cooking fuel. Okay, and the next picture is a co-op family. Don Mario and his wife and daughter are sitting down for a meal of corn tortillas, beans, rice, chicken, and greens. This was a feast compared to many rural families who, if they were lucky, would have a meal of only tortillas and beans. And the next picture is our in-cap team and the co-op family on the porch of El Tigre Cooperative in 1977. This is towards the end of the project. We were able to track improvement of protein calorie intake an increase in family income. There was a strong sense of hope and a possibility amongst these families. It was really excellent, awesome to be part of this project. When the political tensions in El Salvador increased, our team was labeled communists by the U.S.-backed Salvadorian government, and we were told to leave the country. I found out later that the El Tigre Cooperative was eliminated and a family was forced to flee. This album of photos is very likely the only record of that period of time and project that might have served as a model for helping address chronic poverty and malnutrition. Thank you.